How you all doing? <laughs> you had a good weekend? <laughs> I'm in my scruffs because I've been working. Oh, wait there a minute. I've been working again and... Ah! <laughs> like a vampire in here. I have to turn that little backlight on. Um, you know, just so I look more handsome for you guys. Uh, right. Uh, for anyone wondering about the... Um, the new trowel that we're giving away. Or that I'm giving away. It's, uh, it's here. It's been in use today, and in fact, as I'm recording this now, um, there's a video on that uploading, so uh, you'll probably see that before you see this, but if not, go back and check it out in a minute. Um, right, anyway, I won't waffle. Let's get straight into the questions, because there's a load of them, and we haven't got much time, so. First question is from David Crawford. David says, Hi Kirk, I've got a question. How do you get the plastic into corners that aren't square? Obviously, your trowel is square, so what do you do when it's more of a triangular angle? Is there a tool that I need? Thank you, mate. Yes, small tool. Google it. Plaster is a small tool. It's an essential part of your kit. Ah, if you buy one offline, there's a few different types. There's a leaf and a square and a trowel and a square. There's other ones as well, but the less common. Um, go for the trowel and square. Anyway, that's what I use. Um, if you're going to buy them, buy a couple. It's guaranteed. Um, well, I don't lose tools. Other people seem to go in my toolbox and they disappear. Nothing to do with Kieran. He doesn't lose anything. He never has done. I don't know how it works because I've never lost anything of my own for 20 years. But Kieran comes along, you know, and within like a year and a half, flipping loads of things have gone missing, but it's not him. So buy two. That's my advice to you. Ian Davis. Support. So I know that you say SBR is superior. But what do you use when you have to skim over silk paint? Would you go for the grit or use PVA? As PVA seems sticky and SBR doesn't. Um, no, personally, I just use SBR. Whilst we're talking about SBR, but I use SBR pretty much over everything, um, apart from um, steels or if I'm if I'm trying to dab boards to steels, then I'll I'll use a grit. Um, there's loads of different grits that you can get. Whilst we're talking about SBR, I can't, someone, I, I, I read every single comment, by the way, every single one, I do read them all, I can't answer to all of them now, I try to, I try to, but it, it's too much, um, but anyway, I did read somewhere, I can't remember who said it, but somewhere said, someone said that the SBR was causing the plaster to go off faster than the PVA, so what you're doing there is one of either two things, um, or maybe a couple of things, Spreading it too thin, I mean, you've got to keep dipping the roller in. You can't just dip it in once and do the whole wall. I'm not saying you've done that, but that could be the issue, that you're spreading it on too thin. Do not water it down. Um, I use SBR Neat. Or, um, what could it be? Oh, going over it too soon. If I go over, like, bare plaster walls, I'll SBR the walls and I'll let them go off. I'll give them, you know, maybe do it the day before um, to kill the suction completely. It doesn't completely kill the suction when it's still sort of drying out. But once it's completely set, like if you did it one day and did it the next day, there's no suction whatsoever. Um, so if you sort of SBR it and then go straight over it, that might be an issue. So you've got three things there. It'll be one of them three. Just to clarify, don't worry about your grip on the silk paint. Your SBR will stick to that and your plaster will stick to the SBR, okay? So it doesn't matter what you go over with SBR, it will stick to it. The only time, like I said to you, I, I, I use um, a grit is when I'm trying to get massive bits of, you know, plaster, like blobs of adhesive to stick to something. I just like it to have a bit of a, a, a key as well, you know? So a grit for steel work and things like that. Right, question from Ashley T. I'm going to paraphrase this because it's, uh, it's, it's quite a big paragraph. But basically... Ashley uh, wants to know, he's got a big wall to do in his house and he's worried that by the time he gets from one end to the end of it, before he starts second coating, then it may have already set. He said he knows there's products that can slow the set down, but he doesn't really want to mess around with the, the plaster. That's fair enough when you're beginning. I wouldn't recommend messing around with it until you sort of know what you're doing with it anyway. Um, but he said, if I attempted it and it went off by the time I got round to the start again, would it be possible to do the second skim the next day, as long as the first skim was quite flat. Uh, no. I mean, you could do, but you have to seal it and start all over again. Um, no, I... what The first coat has to still be wet for the second coat to bond to it. Not only that, but the first coat starts... Once it's set, then it begins to dry out. And once it's dried out, 
then it's it's got suction so then you're back to square one again um so here's what i recommend you do ashley if you are worried about first coat because you've got a massive wall going off too quick. i mean i don't know how big massive is to you mate i don't i'm assuming it's like a stair wall or something you know uh if it's any more than sort of like two bags of plaster then i'll say that's a you know it's a fair old size wall um anyway i won't waffle on this is what i'd recommend you do because if it's if you're in a normal sized house mate then I'm, I'm assuming the biggest wall is your stair wall coat it with spr the day before give it a good coat of spr not watered down paint it all on let it dry the next day yeah go and get yourself some multi-finish and work efficiently watch some of my videos on um how to apply it faster yeah just you know not messing around with it too much toe to heel toe to heel don't be overlapping loads and um, and you should be fine mate uh, always use clean fresh water wash out between mixes have someone there helping you if you're worried because it's too big get you get your mate or your missus or something to to wash out the bucket for you um and 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 use fresh water for your second mix you shouldn't have a problem um you can flatten in in between trials if it's going to go off a little bit too quick for you but you cut you don't want to be leaving it mate you know you need to be getting sort of straight over it quite quickly all right you should be fine with um multi-finish and sbr you shouldn't have any issues mate i'd be surprised if you do all right come back to me if you're stuck there mate ed v uh can i ask a question about dealing with this temper do you put a stabilizing solution on it let it dry and then use pva also do you put the stabilizing solution straight on the top of the temper or do you scrape it off as much as you can and then use the stabilizing solution um thanks for all the advice so right as long as the distemper or the line wash paint is exposed i.e there's not a layer of paint on top of it because this stabilizing solution won't soak through paint so you've got to like get the distemper exposed first so so everywhere you touch it's like leaving white chalk on your hands yeah you can just paint the stabilizing solution straight onto that yeah once that's dry rub it again if it's still dusty give it another coat keep doing that one coat is usually sufficient but you know sometimes two if it's really thick once it's once it's um not leaving any dust on your hand once it's dry then use your sealer as usual so if you use pva blue grit this will bond it for spr whatever you use paint that on and then and then you're good to go yes you can scrape the distemper down as much as you want if you want to you don't have to the stabilizer solution binds it all together i mean if you don't care about the mess then yes scrape it down i mean it's going to be a better job because there's less of that crap up there you know so um but i've never had to do that i normally just stabilize the solution and um, seal it and then away i go all right mate daniel alamandi i think daniel alamanda 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 daniel <laughs> uh i can mate how do you properly dispose of plaster water do you let it settle pour the clear water away then bag the stuff at the bottom yeah that's pretty much it mate uh never tip it down a customer's drain chances are 50 percent of the time the customer's drains are already blocked and if you go and tip your plaster water down it then you're going to get the blame for it and you'll have to have your hand down there and it'll stink and Trust me, even when you wash your hand ten times, it still stinks. And it always doesn't matter what drain it is, it always seems to smell a poo as well. So if you can avoid putting your hand down drains, just don't go anywhere near it. Um, look, we all know the score of plaster water. This is exactly what I do. <clears throat> plaster water, when you've washed your buckets out, I just keep washing out into one bucket. So I'll, I'll do my first gauge in the morning, I'll wash it all out, and I'll wash it all out into a little builder's bucket, and I'll leave that in the bucket. I won't throw that away. Second mix, I'll use that same water for washing out. It's not for traveling up with, that is just a washing out bucket because I'm, I'm trying to limit the amount of times I have to keep slinging water away because every time it can potentially make mess. Any little splash of that water you get anywhere is going to leave a white stain. So if you have a clean bucket of water on hand, because if any of that spills anywhere, wash it straight off, you know, tip clean water on it and brush it away, a bit more clean water, brush it away, you know, till it's gone. Now, when the end of the day comes and you've got this full bucket of dirty water ideally if the customer have got like a, a board around the garden or in the back garden get your bucket trowel scrape out spit ask the customers tell them this first you know make like a little hole in the soil and tip the the surface water off into the little hole until it's just you've got a load of slop at the bottom scrape that out into a bag 
British gypsum have now lined the plaster bags with like a, 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 a like a, a cellophane inside the two layers of paper. So it's not, it's not waterproof, but it will sort of hold the slop. Put that in the back of your van or, you know, in the wheelie bin or take it to tip or whatever you're going to do. But I try and tip the water into soil. Now, if the customer questions this, gypsum is good for the soil. So, you know, don't lash it across the garden. Don't lash it down the street or on the path or on the drop. Don't tip it anywhere. Put it into a little hole in the soil. Now, if that's not an option, if they haven't got soil in the garden, your next point of call, go into the street, into the main grid. Do not tip plaster down the main grid in the street. Not unless you want the council giving you loads of stick and billing you for... You won't block one. I mean, flipping the trap on a, on the grid in the street, massive. I mean, you won't block it, but you'll get some Karen flipping the phone in the council on you. So tip the surface water off onto that. Take a bucket of clean water because you'll stain the top of the grid. And everyone will think you've tipped plaster down it. All right, you're going to get people squawking at you. So take a clean bucket of water and, and wash it off with that. And again, the sediment in the bottom of the bucket, scrape that out and tip it into a bag. Now, if you're really smart... <laughs> If you, a little tip for you if you're really clever right before you get your washing out bucket yeah get a bit of a bag right and squash it into the bottom of the bucket and then fill your bucket up with water and that's your washing out bucket then right now what you've got is you've got a bag squashed down to the bottom of the bucket now when you get a bit of sediment it'll hold it there but what that does is at the end of the day saves you having to scrape the bottom of that bucket out it literally just falls out because it's it's not stuck to the bottom of the bucket it's st stuck to the old bag all right there's a little tip for you Next question is by Andy. Uh, I used a plaster guitar the last week, which saved my arse as I'm not as speedy as you. It's quite pricey though. Is there any homemade remedies which can be used rather than buying Easy Mix? I've used cream of I've read cream of tartar used to be used, but it's changed the recipe now, so no longer slows it down. Andy, uh, right. Yeah, cream of tartar. Um, I didn't know they changed the, the recipe of it. Um, I know some of the old boys used to use it and uh, my dad used to go on about it but I, I've only ever tried it once <clears throat> and it did work a little bit I found it a little bit um, unpredictable depending on, you know, you put a cap full in um, but sometimes if the lad's mixing and he's, you know, he puts a little bit more or a little bit less in it, it drastically altered it um, extra time look, I buy it. I don't use this so this one's still, this is full I mean, I go through tons of this stuff. I've, I've actually ran out. I need to buy more half time. Um, it's pricey if you're buying one sachet at a time from the builder's yard. But if you go onto Easy Mix's website, I mean, I, I know the fella who makes this stuff, uh, Mark Shepherd. In fact, if you go on any of the plastering groups on Facebook, um, you'll be able to find him. He's, he's a flipping lovely, genuinely lovely bloke. Um, I actually went up and rendered his house for him, and he's, he, he's a top, top geezer. Um, go on his website and buy it in bulk. Buy it by the box. So much cheaper. I mean, don't worry if it's not if you're not going to use it, because it, it lasts forever. It's in little sealed packets. But that's what, that's what I would use. It's measured out. You can't get it wrong. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what they work out at individually, but if you buy it by the box, it's nice peanuts. I mean, if it makes your life dead, if it makes your life dead easy. I mean, what's a bag of plaster cost now? A bag of plaster's like 10, 12 quid or something. They're no way near that price. So that's what I'd recommend, mate. Just buy that stuff. It's it's just lovely to use. Um well I like I say, I don't use the extra time. I don't bother, I don't need it. I use the heart. I would rather do um two rapid little mixes than one long mix that drags on forever you know so um but i know where you're at mate i know where you're at if you if you sort of like you feel like you're gonna struggle and you you want a, a little bit extra time um either that mate or just use multi-finish multi-finish does come back a bit easier than board finish if you notice if you watch my videos i use board finish i'm trying to do everything i can to make it go rapid you know the only thing that isn't rapid anymore is me <laughs> fat ass over here right next question right John Plummer, any recommendation for a render system in a coastal area? I'm on a seafront and the house takes a lot of salty air. It's also quite humid, um, so do get algae in the shady areas that needs an annual clean. Thank you. Um, right, wet dash, mate. Just use wet dash. It, it's basically concrete that you're throwing at your, your house. You know, it's flipping. If you look at a lot of the um, lighthouses, they're done with this stuff. 
there's got different names. Wet Dash, um, I think they call it Harling in um, Scotland, is it? Uh, Splatter Dash, flipping. What else have I heard it called? Basically, you're mixing your, your mortar and you're mixing the stones in it and you're flicking it at the wall. It's horrendous. I've done loads of it. You end up with it in your undies and everything like. But it's it's great um, for for a good solid sort of. Uh, exterior if your house is getting a beating from the weather and algae um just use lime mate you know do do a wet dash with lime just don't get it in your eyes whatever you do um you don't want to be using a hydrated lime though you don't have to use a hydraulic lime difference is hydrated sort of drives with carbonation of the air i think the word's carbonation and hydraulic lime just sets so you want to use a hydraulic lime okay mate Okay, Alan has said, is it possible to plaster over lining paper? I've got a room to do, and it's worse than wood chips to get off. Look, the problem with going over paper is, right, your, plaster, you, your plaster's only going to be as solid as the paper, as well as the paper's hung then. So, I mean, I I would say it's bad practice. It's 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 not very good at all to be going over paper. Um, here's a little key to get your paper off dead easy if you're struggling to get it off. PVA it. Mix your PVA 50-50 of water, like PVA the walls, and it like water seems to evaporate and dry out quite quick. When you PVA it, it stays damp for ages, and it really soaks into the paper, and you'll scrape it off a lot easier. Just don't leave the PVA to dry, like, to, you know, till a couple of hours, because then you'll have sealed it even more. But you, PVA gets wallpapered off dead quick. Um, don't use SBR, because that dries quite fast as well. So PVA, 50-50 of water, let that soak in. Uh, it has been known in the past... Not recommending it, but it's doable. It has been known to get a cheap lecky planer and just plane the walls down. Makes a hell of a mess, but it does get it off. Uh, make sure you wear dust masks. In fact, make sure you wear everything because you, you won't be able to see. The dust will be horrendous. But if you need to get the paper off, that's an option. I mean, it destroys the walls, but you plaster them over them anyway. So, And uh, make sure you use a, a cheap plane from the flea market because that'll be knackered as well by the end of it. Right, Martin Jory said, Hi Kirk, when cutting plasterboard stop beads, is there a way of cutting them without kinking the end? I always have to tap it flat. So, I'm assuming, I'm assuming you need, you mean the ones that clip onto the end of the plasterboard and cover over the edge of the board, they like slot on the end of a plasterboard like that, is what I think you mean. Um, I, and I understand what you're saying, because when you cut some of your snips, you can only cut the two sides, and then you have to bend it and it, and it snaps off in the middle. I hope that's what you mean. If that's the case, yes, I just use an angle grinder. I've put a diamond blade uh, in an angle grinder. In fact, if you go in my videos on uh, how to install render beads, you'll see me using my angle grinder for cutting all my beads. Um, that, that's, I mean, diamond tip blade pretty much cuts anything, so that's what I'd use. Um, if you're talking about the little thin three mil stop beads, put the wing don't cut right through the, the bead and when it sort of curls back it's like a tiny little three mil nip you can just put a tiny little nick in that as well and that'll cut off without kinking it you know don't just sort of like cut the bead if you know what i mean if that i don't know which type of bead you're talking about but you could use an angle grinder on both there's nothing wrong with um using an angle grinder to cut all your beads it's just not as fast that's the only reason i don't use them internally but i do i angle grind everything externally because it's uh it's easier to cut them in situ with an angle grinder Hope that makes sense. Right, Sam Wise. Hi Kirk, I've been plastering for a couple of years. I can get it flat as and smooth as. Never had any complaints. Have you got any advice how to get a nice solid colour? Sam, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, but it doesn't matter. Right, but I'll tell you anyway. I'll tell you how to do it anyway, but it doesn't matter. So when you're talking about when the wall's been skimmed. <clears throat> And it's sort of like drying out and it's just a solid colour. There's no sort of variations. There's no different shades in the plaster. That's what you mean, isn't it? Right? As long as your wall is flat, mate, as long as it's nice and flat, then th then that that's it. Once it's painted, it'll be a solid colour. You know, that's all that matters. But to answer your question, in case you're just getting off on, you know, you just want the walls to look lovely when, you know, the customer walks in. Basically... What you've got is your first layer of finish that goes on. If there's a, a tiny little line in that and your second coat goes on, 
then when the first group starts to set, you get that dark line. You know, towards the end of your gauge, you start seeing the dark lines in it, don't you? Or when you're troweling up, you know, there's there's different shades in it. Now, what's happening is when you're troweling up and there's little hollows and deviations and you're putting a bit of water on, you're bringing a bit of fat off the plaster. Now, don't worry. People go on about fat saying, oh, you can't use the fat. You can't use the fat from the later stages. But the first sort of wet trowel, you can. You know, it's sort of like the last wet trowel. You don't want to be using that fat to fill your face. But anyway, don't want to go off the subject. When you're using the fat, that's going to dry out a slightly different colour to the rest of the plaster. So if you wanted to get that solid block colour, what you need to do is get that wall as flat as possible instantly on both coats. So just try this. This will work for you. I mean, not that it even matters, but it'll work. First coat it as flat as you can. No big lines and no hollows. Hit it with a speed skin. Yeah. Second coat it. No big lines. Hit it instantly with a speed skim. Speed skim both coats, right? Now, that will get it so it's a nice solid colour when you trial it up. But, just to be extra sure, flatten it in, yeah? Then sponge it. So, if, I haven't done a video on sponging. I don't bother doing it, but I know this works for you. If this is if this is your thing and you really want that solid colour, Sam, then sponge it, yeah? Give it a sponge float all over, wet it, and then trial it up. When that dries, mate, It'll just be a nice solid colour for you. Now, I don't do that because you've got like three extra steps there that all take time that don't need doing. They don't affect the end product. As long as the wall's flat at the end, doesn't matter about the colour. Once it's painted, it's painted and it, and it looks perfect. But if you wanted to get that colour, mate, that's try that way. You know, speed skim after the first coat, speed skim after the second coat, or flattening. You can do it with your trial if you haven't got a speed skim. Just the speed skim is faster for you. So I'm just trying to save you a bit of time. Uh, you don't have to sponge it, but experiment yourself, mate. Try sponging it as well. That brings all the fat up and seems to get everything nice and flat. And then what, you, what you're basically doing is the, the plaster you're trialing up is all going off at the same time. It's all the same consistency. It's all the same... Um, Imagine like the strength of the plaster is all the same, if that's a good way of saying it. Imagine like normal plaster is like a hundred percent plaster. Yeah. When you wet trowel it, you bring off plaster that's mixed with water, so it's a bit diluted, so it dries a different colour. But when you sponge it all over, it's all the same sort of um it's all got the same percentage of plaster in it, so it dries the same colour. I'm probably making more I'm probably making this more confusing than it needs to be. But I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Right, I'm going because I'm flipping confusing myself. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's all the questions I can find. I'm going. It's Sunday. I've worked today. I've had enough. I've got to go and um, I'm flipping running dry in here. There's no there's no beers left, so I've got to go. And uh, oh, before I go, I'll tell you. Um, I had a phone call from my dad today. And uh, right, have you ever had mice in your house? So. <laughs> I'm not, my missus hates me telling people this because she thinks like eh, if someone had a mouse in the house, it must be because of the dirty house or something. But I'll tell you, so we had a mouse <clears throat> a couple of years back before COVID and flipping at this thing, it was in the air, it was in the ceiling space, you know, down between the floorboards and the ceiling. Well, <sighs> she was, we put down humane traps first, you know, she didn't, the kids, they all love the animals, they don't want nothing to be hurt. So we're putting down these little humane traps, right? We didn't catch any mice, but they sounded like they were multiplied. So then we started putting down um, proper mouse traps, you know, the ones that whoosh, catch them. Oh, they were going off in the night, flipping heck. It, was, um, it wasn't it was nice because, you, you know, something's just been killed, you know, in your house. But anyway, my, I, I sort of set a few of them up and we caught a few mice. So I said, I left my missus in charge of it then. I said, right, love, you deal with this now. I've... Showing you how to catch them properly, you know. Um, and she was setting the trap in such a way. She, I, I can't, it's hard to explain without showing you, but she was putting the pin in, in such a way that it didn't matter what you did. It wouldn't go off. So, <laughs> she was like putting the flipping different things on. There was chocolate going on. There was cheese. There was all sorts of stuff. The traps would never go off. And she's saying, that they've got wise to it. I said, no, love. Look, you're setting it. You're flipping the, you're feeding them. Bring in more. <laughs> You've been feeding the things, right? So in the end, <clears throat> oh, flipping, I felt guilty doing this. Like, but I think we were, getting, you know, there was more of them. So I ended up putting poison down, and that solved the problem. You know, poison 
instant fix. So anyway, what I was telling you was, that was ages and ages ago. But I know my mind now, if I ever hear a little in the night, they're just getting poisoned. It's not worth messing around with the other stuff, just it kills them faster. Sorry for all the animal lovers that flipping love mice. I just didn't like them running around my house because I'm thinking they piss when they run. And if they're on my work tops and stuff and, you know, illnesses and diseases. and uh, No, 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 not for me. Sorry. Sorry. But anyway, my dad phones me. And he said, son, I've got a, I think I've got a little mouse in my bungalow. Like he lives in like a little bit of a, an old pensioner's bungalow thing now. Uh, he phones me, I've got a little mouse, you know. So how, how do you know that? He said, well, I've seen it, you know, I've see, seen it going across the doorway, like. So I'm going, in my head, I'm starting thinking about what we had to deal with last time. So I'm thinking, right, Dad, listen, we need to get on Amazon. And I'm I'm invested straight away. I'm like, I'm on my Amazon, got him on loudspeaker. I'm trying to find the poison for him to just buy it now because it's only a couple of quid, you know, I'm going to get it for him because he doesn't know how to use Amazon and all that. He's not that savvy on his phone, like. And as he's talking, he goes, no, what I'm done, son, what I'm, what I'm doing is um, I don't need poison. I've been spraying um, WD-40 around the bottom of all the doors and around all the pipes. What? WD-40? What's that going to do? He said, well, it doesn't kill them, but it stops them squeaking. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> This is the stuff I have to deal with on a daily basis. You know, when you're trying to get jobs done, you've got people pulling your leg like that. Flipping nightmare. Right, anyway, I'm going for more beer. <sighs> Ciao.